gotcha. Ten things you didn't know about the hammer. Welcome everyone to my new series where we're going to be giving out some of the most interesting and most useful tips for using each of the 14 weapon classes. So I intend to make 14 of these videos. Might not happen overnight, but we're going to be doing that. And we're going to be starting here with the hammer because it's one of my most played weapons. If you're excited for this series, let me know and tell me which weapon you'd like to see next. Let's get started with the list. I think probably one of the most important pieces of information that anyone's going to ask you about whenever it comes to a weapon is which one is the strongest? For hammers, that's not too hard to answer because similar to great swords, hammers are raw damage weapons. You don't really worry too much about the ailment. You don't really worry too much about the element. What's most important is how much raw damage does this weapon do? So all you really do is take a look at the attack value. It's not too complicated. Uh, in this case, it's going to be the acidic glavenous hammer. You get a combination of uh, elementless, you get a combination of purple sharpness, and really high attack. Those are all the things you want, and it has fairly good affinity too. It doesn't have a bunch of negative affinity, okay? So this is actually craftable fairly early on, and there's going to be other stronger hammers coming from Safajiva, but when we're talking about craftable hammers, again, it's gonna be acidic glavenous. And this is the weapon we see most hammer speed runs right now. They were finished with the acidic glavenous. If we're talking about the fastest speed runs, of course, that's probably going to be replaced over time with the new Safajiva weapons, but that's probably gonna take a while. Number two, the most common question I get when I'm playing Monster Hunter is, what's the best build for this weapon? And there's different ways to think about what the quote best build is. Uh, some people want to optimize for damage, but I don't recommend skipping out on health boost ever. So I'm gonna show you a few builds and none of these builds are going to miss out on health boost. Of course you could give it up and take something like attack boost rather than health boost, but I just don't do that myself. If you were a speedrunner, you were probably going to do it, but if you're a speedrunner, you probably don't need my help with the build. Number three, did you know that the hammer is one of my favorite weapons to use for building wide range setups? Those are healer setups, right? Why do I like it? Because a lot of the moves on the hammer can be canceled out of pretty quickly, and it also has a fast sheath time, and also, to optimize damage on a hammer, you don't really need a lot of special skills, right? So if you're talking about, let's say the greatsword, you're gonna have to bring focus so that your attacks come out faster. You don't really need that on the hammer. So the hammer just takes really basic skills for doing the most damage and has a very decent uh, sheath time. The commitment on its attacks, that is the recovery frames needed to get out of a move. They're not that bad either. So this turns out to be one of your uh, best options for healing. By the way, my favorite healing options are the hammer, the light bow gun, and the sword and shield. I think they do it better than any of the other weapons in the game just because of those combination of not needing too many skills, but also having very fast sheath time, basically being able to eat very quickly. Obviously, the sword and shield doesn't even have to sheath. All right, let's move on to the next one. Number four, hammers actually get one level of flinch free when you charge the hammer up. All right, so if you want to be able to kind of ignore some moves that the monster might throw at you, or maybe some attacks from your opponents that would normally flinch you because of friendly fire, we're thinking of course about maybe the longsword or something like that. Make sure you have flinch free while you're attacking the monster. It's at that point that you get one level of flinch free. And of course you can take a level of flinch free with you and this will help even more. We'll talk more about that in the future. Also, the hammer is capable of having Mind's Eye. So what Mind's Eye does is it stops the monster from deflecting your move. Well, not all of the hammer's attacks are protected with Mind's Eye. However, if you charge the hammer up, I believe both level two and level three of the charge comes with built-in Mind's Eye. So a lot of the hammer's attacks are just charge attacks, right? You just hold down right trigger, you charge up level one, level two, level three. Level two is going to be the upswings. I don't think I've ever been deflected from an upswing. And then level three is going to be the uh, brutal big bang and charged brutal big bang. So those definitely do not deflect, I'm sure of that. So some of the hammer moves actually do come with uh, Mind's Eye as well. Another attack I know that comes with Mind's Eye is definitely Definitely the aerial attack, which you'll find out is really valuable to know. You know, like aerial spinning bludgeon, but also the ledge hop aerial. So both of those aerials are protected with mind's eye. Speaking of aerial attacks, number five, hammers are surprisingly one of the best aerial damage weapons in the game. They might be the best aerial damage weapon in the game. So what is it with hammers that's so special? There's a playstyle where you roll off of a ledge and then you bring yourself back onto the ledge to repeat 
aerial attacks over and over again. Some people call this aerial style. I call it ledge hopping because I think it kind of describes what you're doing a little bit better. So ledge hopping, you just repeatedly roll off the ledge and pull yourself back on. With the hammer, it's very simple to do this. You just roll off and then you uh, you know, you know, face toward the ledge and you press right trigger. This will bring you back onto the ledge. It's so good, you can even pull yourself back onto the ledge and throw the hammer behind you with an attack. That's how good it is on the hammer. So the hammer has all kinds of control when it's using its, uh, its what is it, the charged aerial attack. So yeah, it's really powerful. Not only that, the hammer is able to go into a slide attack very easily. So when you're using a hammer and you start to charge the weapon on a hill, it begins to slide right away. And this can be turned at a 90 degree angles and released to turn into an aerial attack. And this is the spinning aerial bludgeon, which is also very high damage on the hammer. I'm pretty sure it's higher damage than a regular ground attack based on an analysis of uh, behemoth speedruns that I've watched. So both the ledge hop and the spinning aerial bludgeon, really powerful. Be sure to pair this with the airborne skill, which you get from the flight decoration. And this is going to give you 30% more attack power in the air, which is just so much damage, right? 30% from a single medium decoration is so much bonus damage, which is, is just the reason why the hammer is doing such a great job with the aerial attacks. It's why when you go look at the hammer speed runs, they're mostly all aerial speedruns, ledge hopping. They're just ledge hopping monsters. So if you're going to learn the hammer, you really, really, really want to learn how to ledge hop and how to use your spinning aerial bludgeon uh, to its best effect. For example, when I started ledge hopping, what I would do was I would just spam the roll and then the jumping attack over and over again. But the trick is to watch the monster carefully and try to determine when that monster is going to attack and then what you can do is you can iframe, you can roll through the attack, and, and this is when you're rolling off of the ledge, and then you can come back on and smack the monster in the head. Another little trick for those of you who are using hammer maybe throughout the story and you just want to maybe a bit of a, a help or edge to your fight, lure the monster over to a cliff or to a ledge, bring them over to the side, and then just jump down yourself. What the monster will do is they will follow you down, they will jump down, and this is a very harmless move that the monster does. If it, the monster touches you, it'll send you like falling backwards, but it doesn't really do damage. So just kind of don't touch the monster's body when they're jumping down, and then you at the same time, you need to be climbing back up, and this will allow you basically to just ledge hop the monster with the monster not attacking you at all, because they're following you, following you down the ledge. You can even have your cat, and your cat might chill down there, and the monster might stay down there attacking your cat, and you can really abuse the enormous hitbox that you get when you're ledge hopping with the hammer. So this is a trick I used to get through the Iceborne story mode without ever upgrading any of my equipment. So that was number five of the things you didn't know. Number six is going to be about spinning bludgeon on the ground. So spinning bludgeon is probably the most complex attack on the hammer. The reason for this is because depending on how many times you spin with the hammer, your move totally changes. So first of all, a lot of players don't even know in order to go into a spinning bludgeon, you have to charge the hammer to level three and then be walking forward and then release the trigger. This will send you into a spinning bludgeon. Okay, so some players don't know that. Then there's other players that don't understand to go into a brutal big bang. You do the same thing, but you stop walking. So if you don't wanna use spinning bludgeon, you need to charge the hammer to level three, let go of the joystick so you're standing still and release the trigger. This will be a brutal big bang. So brutal big bang and spinning bludgeon share the same level three charge which one you go into is determined by whether you let go of the joystick or not all right so that first of all that probably cleared up a lot of confusion for hammer players or new hammer players right if that helped you with using your hammer be sure to leave a like on the video now let's clear up another thing about the spinning bludgeon this is a really confusing part this took me a long time to figure out and it's my most played melee weapon is the hammer so when you charge up the spinning bludgeon and you release the spinning bludgeon the way it's really working is there's like three stopping points that you can choose between in order to get different ending combinations with the hammer i'm going to show you all three combinations on screen so the first one is going to be an early combo where you don't spin very much and you release it early and this goes into overhead smash two and then the whole combo ends very quickly so this is kind of like a low commitment combination the next combo is the longest combo with the spinning bludgeon, and it begins with something called spinning follow-up. So if you allow the hammer to rotate about two to three times, you'll notice, uh, especially in the training room, you'll notice spinning follow-up shows up. And what happens is when you go into this, it's going to start you off at overhead smash 
one. So you're going to do the spinning follow-up, overhead smash one, overhead smash two, and then I believe the last move is called the upswing, right? So this is the longest combination, and an analysis of extreme behemoth speedruns, I noticed when players had an opportunity, uh, speedrunners had an opportunity to use this combination, they would. But it required a large window of time for them to use it, and it seemed like one of their motivations for using this combination was they needed to approach a part on the monster's body. They didn't have time to like come to a complete stop and start doing Big Bang. So they would go into that combo. Also, what's interesting about spinning bludgeon is you can change your mind on what you want to do midway through the spinning bludgeon. So if you decide, oh shoot, I need to end this combo early, then you end it early. But if you're like, I can go all the way with this based on the monster's behavior, then you can go all the way with the longest combination. Let's talk about the third combination you can have with spinning bludgeon. So first of all, let me explain. If you don't interrupt the spinning bludgeon with the follow-up combination, your character spins and he spins and then he does this kind of like off-balance animation like, oh, I've been thrown off balance. I've Maybe I spun too many times, right? So he kind of throws the hammer off to the side. You don't want that because it's got very bad recovery frames. So if you go into spinning bludgeon, you have to also interrupt the spinning bludgeon with a, a combination. And we've been talking about the fast combination. We've been talking about a really long combination after two to three spins. And then finally, we have this la last combination where you do a spinning upswing. What you do is you can hit the monster up to six times with the spinning bludgeon itself. I, I counted, I tested, before you go into that off balance kind of like pose, right? So you can charge it up, you can smack that monster six times. After six times have passed, you need to use the only combination you have left before the off balance animation kicks in. And this is going to be the spinning upswing, okay, your character. You know, he goes golfing and he swings the hammer up. And this can lead into an overhead smash level one if you want. Uh, but at that point, I, I imagine you must be out of time. <laughs> Unless the monster's knocked down, you should be out of time to continue to attack. Your monster's probably attacking you. Uh, but yeah, so that's all three of the combinations with the spinning bludgeon. You know, you've got the early one, the one in the middle, and the ending one, the spinning upswing one. So that was one of the most complicated things to learn about the hammer. And the better you understand the spinning bludgeon, the better you'll be at the hammer because the reality is that the experts really do actually use spinning bludgeon, okay? You've got a number of moves you can use. You've got like the charged upswing, and that's when you just charge the hammer and you release it on the second charge. That does no damage. So again, that's, that's two charges of the hammer uh, and brutal upswing, it just doesn't do enough damage. So the experts, what they do is they charge into either a brutal big bang, that's a level three charge, or they go into a spinning bludgeon, which leads into one of those combinations that you just learned about, okay? They don't spam upswing. They do on a rare occasion just to get a KO, but they're really sure that they've got a KO waiting for them, okay? That's it. Uh, so, and, okay, so that covers one of the tips on the list, by the way. that's We've just covered number five, where we explain all... I'm sorry. We just covered number six, where we explain all of the spinning bludgeon combinations. And number eight was a warning not to spam the brutal upswing, because it doesn't actually help you damage-wise. You can launch players with the brutal upswing. This is really useful to know if a player's been paralyzed. You can knock them out of the paralysis with the brutal upswing. Not a lot of players realize this, or they just don't notice it in time, or they don't try it's something. Uh, but since I play the hammer a lot, I've actually saved quite a few of my teammates from being paralyzed. Uh, because once you figure out how to do this, you actually are really good at unparalyzing them. The brutal upswing occurs very quickly. It only takes two levels of charge and you knock your teammates right out of it. The other nice thing about brutal upswing is you can actually launch your players who can then get a mounting attack on the monster. So if you have somebody like a greatsword player on your team and he's not in an attack already, you can launch him and he'll deal mounting damage on the way down to the monster, maybe grabbing onto the monster for a mount. Okay, so we're done with tips six, seven, and eight. Let's talk about the ninth thing you didn't know about the hammer. Tip number nine is going to be for players who want to deal a lot of damage to the monster's head and get rid of the teammates who are crowding around the monster's head. So one of the most frustrating experiences with the hammer is a bunch of people crowd around the monster's head when they don't necessarily have to. A lot of the times, the tail is actually a better place for a longsword to attack, but the issue here is You've gone through the work of softening the monster's head, and now the longsword player's like, ooh, I want to attack that rather than the tail, because he didn't soften the tail like he could have. He just didn't want to. Of course, part of that is probably because he has to do it twice to get it softened. But yeah, so he didn't soften the tail. You soften the head. Now he's going for the head and stopping you from getting a big bang. What do you do about it? So when the monster goes down, here's what I recommend. Charge a... Uh, 
an upswing. Uh, remember, this is a level two charge on the hammer. And in fact, what you can do is you can you can get the hammer charge going, and then you can set up for the brutal upswing. This will send him flying. It'll get your hammer glowing white, just like you want it to. And what you do is aim for the longsword player. So just kind of go in, try to hit the longsword player and the monster's head at the same time. This will send him flying, and maybe he will stay away from the head next time, because he's like, God dang it, this hammer guy keeps sending me flying. Then after the uh, brutal upswing is over, you just go straight into the big bang. The two moves actually combo. All right, so when you use a brutal upswing, it moves, right, it transitions right into the big bang with very few recovery frames. So this allows you to go right into big bang, and you have a fair chance of finishing your big bang. Of course, there's another combination that will punish players who are crowding the head who shouldn't be. We talk about overhead smash. Overhead smash can be comboed into from the spinning bludgeon, remember that? Well, at the end of the overhead smash, there's a move called upswing, and when you upswing, if anyone was near you, they also get launched. So I recommend using these moves a lot if you have longsword players or dual blades or whatever it is. If they're crowding the head and they really probably shouldn't be there. So if you know that the tail is bad for those weapons, just, just cooperate with them as best as you can. Try to position yourself well. But if they're just attacking the wrong body part because they're being a little greedy, they're like, I don't want to have to soften parts. I'll just take your part. If they're doing that, use the upswing combination and just get rid of them. And they'll be like, God damn it. Right. It's, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little self-destructive. You're, you know, you're lowering their damage, which means you're lowering the team's damage. But it's a game. Do what you want. Right. Have a little bit of fun. Tip number 10 is one of the things that really helped me get more damage when the monster is knocked down. So one of the mistakes I would make is I would charge the hammer. I'd make sure the hammer's glowing white before going into the big bang in order to get the most damage I could on a knockdown monster. But I quickly learned the big bang, it lasts just long enough that you barely have time to pull off the entire move on a downed monster. So if your hammer isn't charged and you're not near a ledge, so you can't just ledge hop spam the monster, I use the draw attack on the monster. So a lot of the times you'll be landing from maybe having mounted the monster and you'll be knocked far away. I run right up to the monster. I use the draw attack and then I go straight into Big Bang because the draw attack transitions into Big Bang very quickly. The problem is you won't have a charged hammer and this means no protection with flinch free. No flinch free protection. Oh no. Uh, so the problem here is if you're playing with anyone else, you have a very high likelihood of being interrupted and this will stop you from finishing that big bang still, which is why when we talk about special skills you can bring with the hammer, uh, besides talking about uh, the flight decoration, we also talk about the flinch free decoration. It's extremely useful for, mu for multiplayer it's for this reason right here doing an, uh, a big bang where your weapon is not charged. Uh, having the flinch free decoration will help you finish that even if a longsword player is right next to you. So we've been talking about big bang a lot. For tip number 11, let's talk about how do you deal your most damage to the monster. And it turns out the highest damage you're going to be dealing to that monster is spamming the ledge hop attack, right? So this is your aerial swing when you roll off the ledge and you pull yourself back on. It's like a charged attack, right? Spamming that does your best damage. Charge it up, roll off the ledge, and just start spamming it. If a monster goes down by the ledge, what we see experts do is they don't go into the Big Bang. They just keep ledge hopping. This tells me that the ledge hop is performing better than the Big Bang, because if the Big Bang did more damage, speedrunners would easily transition into the Big Bang because the monster is already knocked down. So they choose the ledge hop, and that's what I recommend. Anytime you can ledge hop that monster while he's down, choose that rather than the Big Bang. So that was bonus tip number one. Bonus tip number two. We've talked about a number of special skills you can take with your hammer to deal more damage. Uh, we've talked about the flight decoration, the wide range decorations, flinch free. Finally, we're going to mention the affinity sliding skill. That's a medium decoration. If you go sliding down a hill, you do a lot more damage because the affinity slider has been buffed to activate faster. And, uh, you know, you can go right into a spinning bludgeon as well. So it's a nice little skill to have, especially if for some reason you're not able to get your affinity high enough. And that's going to be all the tips for the hammer. 10 things you didn't know about the hammer. Now you do know them. What weapon would you like to see us do next? I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.